For most Americans, retirement income is self-funded, and there's no shortage of people selling advice on managing 401ks or IRAs. Some advisors, though, have built-in conflicts of interest. Federal rules and regulations for this type of work, though, are spotty, according to the most recent study by the Government Accountability Office. Details now from the GAO's Director of Education, Workforce, and Income Security, Chris Nguyen. Ms. Nguyen, good to have you back. Thank you for having me. And what were you looking at here? This is, first of all, you were looking at the state of financial advisors that come in different stripes and flavors, some of which are probably better for individuals than others. We were asked by Congress to look at conflicts of interest and investment advice impacting retirement investors with a particular focus on the impact of the 2016 DOL fiduciary rule. Now, this rule aimed to expand the definition of what a fiduciary is, and it's important to note that the rule was vacated in 2018. So specifically, we looked at three things, how industry changes to address the 2016 fiduciary rule, how conflicts are communicated, and the associated investment return. And lastly, federal oversight in this area. All right. Well, let's begin at the beginning here, though. What is a fiduciary and what is a non-fiduciary and what's the difference and why does that matter? Fiduciary, just simply, uh, we can get into the legal definition of uh, what a fiduciary is, uh, but to put it simply, is someone who is in the position of trust uh, and who has interest in uh, providing advice to the to the retirement investors and uh, how that definition is uh, determined by law and regulations. And DOL has an important role in defining that. Sure. And the, the definition is currently stated with the rule from 1975. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more how DOL is aiming to change that. Right. But in general, a fiduciary is someone that's not also selling you something they make a profit on. Uh, This is where we get into the potential conflicts of interest. A fiduciary can be your um, investment advisor. And this is what our aim is looking at, is to what extent the financial advisor may have conflicted interest uh, with the investment advisor. And this comes in the form of compensation. The investment advisor may have the interest to sell products that bring them the highest compensation, and that may conflict with the interest of an investment advisor. Uh, I'm sorry, the retirement investor. And how this plays out is that what, what is the impact on this? The impact on this is that what we found is that it can be associated with low returns. We, we looked at the data from Morningstar on mutual funds from 2018 to 2021. And what we found is that when mutual funds that compensate investment advisors for when their clients purchase these funds, it shows a lower return. And as you can imagine, with the lower return, it impacts the, the growth of the retirement savings for investors. So therefore, it's really important to understand how conflicts of interest plays out and how it impacts participants. And is the Department of Labor's role in this simply to have a definition of fiduciary or do they have some regulatory function here? Well, the the responsibilities we focus in, there, there are many players because this deals with the financial market. But we focused in more on the DOL as well as the IRS. To put it simply, IRS has the sole enforcement authority over prohibitive transactions, uh, which protects investment investors over uh, conflicts of interest. And DOL has the interpretive authority. um, So they define what prohibitive transactions are. 
Okay. We're speaking with Chris Nguyen. She's Director of Education, Workforce, and Income Security at the Government Accountability Office. And you mentioned that in 2016, the Labor Department tried to update a 50-year-old definition of fiduciary. What was their aim there and what happened? Well, the, the aim is to expand the definition of what a fiduciary is. A lot of things have evolved, in, including the, the growth of IRAs, which is um, it has about $11 trillion, about 30 percent of the retirement savings. So among other things, the expansion included the inclusion of advice pertaining to rollovers from an employer plan to IRAs. And again, as I noted, that this rule was vacated uh, in 2018. That was after a court challenge? It was vacated by the Fifth Circuit Court. Uh, It's also important to note that uh, more recently, in 2024, DOL introduced the fiduciary rule with a different and expanded definition. And again, it's facing a court order for stay. Um, So that now is in effect. The stay is in effect. So the stay is in effect. Therefore, the 1975 definition is still in effect, and this is before the rise of so many investment instruments and so many investment instrumentalities like the internet, for example. This rule that is in place predates all of that. The 1975 is is in effect, yes. All right. Well, so given that things stand the way they do, what's GAO's conclusion here and what are you recommending? What would you have Labor Department and, if necessary, IRS do at this point? Is there anything they can do? We made two recommendations to the IRS to improve its oversight over conflicts of interest, uh, specifically the oversight of prohibitive transactions. Now, what we found is that this is through our undercover calls to 75 different firms. We found that it is very difficult for investors to navigate conflicts of interest. And unless conflicts of interest is mitigated, their retirement savings can be hindered, as we discussed earlier. So it's really important for the IRS, who has sole enforcement authority, to take a proactive approach in monitoring prohibitive transactions. Uh, Currently, the IRS is relying on firms and um, financial professionals to self-report noncompliance. We're delighted to have the agency IRS to concur with our recommendations. We we believe that when our recommendations for IRS to adopt this recommendation, it would enhance the protection for retirement investors. And by the way, what is a good example of a prohibited transaction that someone would encounter that you might have found in making the calls that you made to the investment firms? There are different examples, but I'll I'll go to the most uh, uh, simple one, uh, which is what one might expect is for the parties involved, and it can be financial advisor to not engage in a transaction that is not in the best interest of the investor, uh, the participant. Right. So they would sell something maybe that is not in the best interest and the investor would buy it, and the compensation of value to the seller is is that transaction, but it doesn't really benefit the investor. That's correct. To put it simply, the compensation, the advisor may aim for a product that would bring them higher compensation, and yet uh, it may not yield uh, a higher uh, investment return. So it would not be in the best interest of the investor, but in the best interest of the uh, advisor instead. And any recommendations for the Labor Department? Our recommendations uh, were directed to both of them were directed to the IRS. One is to take a proactive approach to enforcement, uh, and the other is to engage in uh, collaboration and coordination with DOL, given its role for defining what prohibitive transactions are. Right. So labor defines them, IRS enforces them. That's correct. Well, sounds like important work because, as you say, $11 trillion 